try turning That's it down. Spine. Yeah, sorry. Ooh. Do right. that again. Sorry. Here you go. Hey guys, Adam here. And Lawrence. And James. And Lawrence just came back from Chicago to play a little bit uh, of uh, the new Mortal Kombat. Yes, I'm Big a, Apple. I'm a journalist, the Windy Apple. Uh, yeah, Warner flew a, me and a bunch of other fellows out to play Mortal Kombat and talk with the devs. Yeah. And tell us your background. Um, no, sorry. And tell us your background on Mortal Kombat. I like it a lot. Yes. I had Mortal Kombat on VHS and I watched it every day since. Right. Well, we're talking about the video game, though. What? The video game. The, the video game based on that movie you watched. Oh, I didn't know there was one. Yeah. Okay, um, well, I, 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 I recall you reviewed, <clears throat> sorry, I recall you reviewed, I think, Mortal Kombat 9, I guess they were calling it, just Mortal Kombat the reboot, mm -hmm. and you loved the crap out of it. Yeah, it was uh, it was a good return to form after Mortal Kombat sort of losing its way for a while. Annihilation was a little weird. Wait, that's not what it's called. Armageddon was a little weird. Annihilation was the bad movie. Anyway, also weird. Yeah, so James, I have to apologize here. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you sent me with a very specific question, two I questions did. actually, both of which were, is Johnny Cage in the game? Yeah. And I, I am sorry to report that after a lot of journalism, I still don't know. Can I, all right, so, well let me ask you this, did you find out if Johnny Cage is in the game though? Uh, you know I asked, uh, after asking twice, uh -huh. and I'm still unsure about how the rest of that conversation went. Okay, because I saw that they announced him a couple months back, but I'm still I'm still not sure if he's in the game. Well, so. I, well, I have some notes here. Let me, okay. Wait, I, no. Nothing. Mm, hmm. Still not in here. All right. Well, jury's still out on Johnny Cage. So it's actually been a few years since the last Mortal Kombat came out. Uh, we got Injustice Gods Among Us between the last Mortal Kombat and this one. What's the big thing that they're pushing for Mortal Kombat X? Oh, there's a lot of... Oh, there's so much! God, there's a whole world of Mortal Kombat. Uh, I'm trying to think of where to start here, because there's actually a lot of cool stuff to talk about. I guess in terms of story, uh, Mortal Kombat 9 basically retold 1 through 3. So. Not surprisingly, MKX starts with Mortal Kombat 4. It starts with everybody's favorite Elder God, Shinnok, uh, invading Earthrealm again to kill the Elder Gods, and... You sound interested. Yeah, Mortal Kombat story. Uh, so, I like Mortal Kombat story like I like Fast and Furious. It's dumb as hell, oh, yeah. but it's actually pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, and I got to play uh, some of story mode, which um, I, I haven't said to inform, I'm not sure exactly which character you play as in story mode. But uh, for the first chapter, it was actually pretty cool. It. it it actually understands what it is because there's a lot of cutscenes, there's a lot of really dumb fighting and like really stupid dialogue, mm -hmm. but the choreography is actually really good. So, not a lot going on with the story, obviously. We're fans of it, but it's not the focus here. Gameplay, what did you notice that's different in this one from the uh, last one? There's actually a lot of stuff. So this, if, if you're not into fighters, some of this stuff may be a little more than what you care about. Talk to me, Lawrence. So, yeah. So Mortal Kombat, they're definitely designing it so you can get in, hit buttons, rip people's heads off, and have a good time. But, you know, there's a lot of thought behind that, and some of that reflects in the actual fighting mechanics. So, you know, Run is back. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, an old goodie from Mortal Kombat 3, but it's not quite like it was in 3. So in 3 you had a run meter, you would just charge people down, smash out your dial a combo, and then hope that it hit. Here there's a stamina meter that run uses, and you can use, you, and you can actually run during a combo. So it's crazy, you can do your pop-up juggle, run forward, do another juggle, run forward again, do another move. But there are certain moves that also use stamina, so it's kind of, that's how they kind of limit what your options are in terms of juggles and special moves. Uh, there are some other uh, other new additions too. Like there's a uh, let's see here, you can cancel the run into anything, which has some crazy mind games. Like you can run forward and crouch, you can run forward and jump, you can run forward and throw. Uh, the only thing you can't do is run forward into a neutral jump. But uh, in terms of overall fighting design, they wanted uh, the designer Paulo Garcia, the lead combat designer. He described it as rock'em sock'em robots. Basically, he wants a lot of kind of low damage hits to actually get through. So it's not just a tanking fight. It's not the sort of thing where one person can just run away with it. They want the, they want both players to just be slapping at each other the whole match until one of them finally goes down. That that was my my big issue with quotations around issue because I did like Mortal Kombat Nine a lot. Um, one of my issues though was that you could learn the combo like you could basically learn the combo that did fifty percent damage every single time, and all you had to get was that first hit, right? And then and there was a lot of. Um, block stun and stuff where where you could just keep hammering away and then you'd be safe. So so there wasn't a lot of risk to attempting it. So you, so if you watched like high level Mortal Kombat 9 play, you would see the same couple moves happening over and over again because they were just trying to start that 50% combo and then that kind of changed in injustice. 
it, I really liked Injustice a lot because it seemed like they were like, okay, we're just gonna give you a lot of tools and you can play around with them. So you can you can knock someone into the air, but then it's up to you if you want to freeze them with Superman and then do some big move or chase them down or start a new combo. Like, so it sounds like it's kind of a merger of the two. It really is. Yeah, that's a that's a great way to put it. And the other interesting thing about that is the variation system. And if you saw like. There, I just like, you can combo one spear into another spear, mm -hmm. but the, it's gated by stamina, so that kind of limits your options, but it makes it way more wide open, because you're right, MK9 was basically like, I have my 50% combo, as long as I have the meter, yeah. I'm just gonna try to do that over and over again, yeah. and if it's safe on block, you, you just have to sit there and wait for it. When it comes to kind of being more freeform, the variations is, a, is another part of that, where there are certain variations that will open up combo opportunities. So some variations will have a pop-up move that you just would not have if you didn't pick that variation. By the way, do you know what variations are? Yeah, yeah. I, each character has three different versions of themselves, yeah. like which have slightly different changes on their move sets, right? Yeah. So it's it's weird because it's tempting to think that those changes is just like okay, now I have this special move and I don't if I choose something else, which is true. But having a special move can drastically change how you play a character. So for instance, Kung Lao has a, a variation where he can just throw his hat and have it like just stay at a part of the stage. So essentially you can zone out a player or maybe throw it over their body when they're down on the ground. So they have to wake up backdash or have to jump over it to come at you. And then you can start to use that to zone out your, your opponent. Other characters have moves where uh, they will have certain combo options that are only available with that particular type of variation. So you know that when you pick that, that's open to you, and ideally, you know, when your opponent picks that, you know to watch out for that sort of thing. It could potentially really open up combos to be a lot more improvisational. Mm -hmm. I hope that's how it works out. Because, you're, yeah, fighting game players tend to find the best option in any particular instance and just do that over that's, and over that's again. That's what I'm curious about, too, because, you know, obviously fighting games have tier lists. You know, some characters, for whatever reason, end up being statistically worse than other characters. But now I'm curious if it's like, like, this version of Kung Lao, this variation of Kung Lao ranks much higher than this ver variation of Kung Lao. So, like, every character basically has to appear on the tier list, like, three times. And I'm wondering if people are going to find out, like, oh, there's no reason to... You would, why would you even bother using this other Kung Lao? But I guess it's a player style kind of thing? I think, and I think that'll happen. I mean, that happens with every fighting game. Within a week, people swear they have it all figured out. And then a month later, it's completely different. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not going to worry about that too much. In terms of people that are actually like really digging into a fighting game, this game gives you a lot of great tools, so you can see all the frame data for every combo and every move. Yeah. Which is fucking awesome. Yeah. You can also tag up certain moves, like you hit them with a little star, and then if you turn on a display, it'll actually show it on screen all the time. Yeah, yeah. So if you're thinking like, what was that combo, I want to practice it, you can just have it there all the time. So, they're doing a lot of cool stuff to make like core fighters more approachable, which is strange. You would think that would come from something like Guilty Gear, which is a lot yeah. more mechanically complicated. But here it's like, if you want to learn how to fighters this or how to play fighters, this is seemingly the best way to do it. Yeah. One of the coolest additions in the last Mortal Kombat was the X-ray moves. Oh yeah. What have they done to change those for this? Or are they just pretty much the same? They're pretty much the same. It takes your entire meter. Uh, it's just one hit that if you land does like 20-30% damage. Uh, you can combo into them. Uh, and also just like, I would say the biggest change is they just look really cool. They look a lot better and the sound design is ridiculous. Kang Shadow. In skill I equal him. In my service you will surpass him. I want to ask about that graphically. Is this still running on Unreal 3 or did they move over to Unreal 4? You know, I, uh, I did ask Ed Boon about that a while ago and he's, he was kind of like, you know, it was Unreal, but at a certain point you've changed so much of the code it's not Unreal anymore. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, I think that legacy is still there kind of in the same like, like the Half-Life engine was based in Quake 2 at some point. Mm -hmm. But I, I kind of, I'm kind of okay with them saying we've made this ours. Because the stuff they're doing with this game graphically, I haven't really seen a lot of other games. <laughs> Oh, fatality? Yeah, this is gonna get bad. Uh, no! Oh. One G! Um... 
Um, I think we forgot. Uh, I think we forgot to ask what platform did you play on? I played on PlayStation Four. Okay, most and of it the time. and it played pretty smooth. You yeah, said it was frames a extremely smooth. I mean, granted, the game is only nineteen days away, eighteen days. Seriously? So it, it's basically done. Yeah, April seventeenth. Really released date. So, yeah, it played really played really well. It uh, frame rate was rock solid. Controls were all on point. So I'm uh, I'm cool. The only the only thing I can possibly complain about is they didn't have a stick. I'm still one of those guys, but that's all right. Aside from that, the only other the only other little thing, like I was saying before, with them making they're like putting a lot of great tools in here for fighting games is they have a lot of cool options. Like you can turn off negative edging. So if you're unfamiliar with what that means, and Capcom fighters, they added a thing called negative edge, which is they treated releasing a button the same as hitting a button. And the way that worked is if like you were doing a fireball and you hit punch early, it would treat releasing the button as also hitting punch, so you would still throw the fireball. Mm -hmm. It was meant to make the game easier for players, but it actually fucks you over if you're hitting, like releasing a button at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. So you can turn that off now. There's a bunch of other like cool little mechanical options they exposed to make it play exactly like what you want. Okay. And uh, where that came from is Paolo, the, the combat designer said he was watching a lot of tournaments and some people in MK9 would lose tournaments because special moves would come out when they didn't want them to. Mm -hmm. So he wanted he wanted to expose these options to make sure that people can play exactly how they so want. So that's why I've been losing fighting games all this time. Uh, negative edging. Yeah. Negative edging. Nether Realm is very good about cramming a lot of single player content into their games. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, yeah finally. Uh, so there's going to be a long story mode, obviously, but it, it seems like the mode that they really want to keep people on forever is the tower system. So Mortal Kombat's always had towers. Uh, shit, that was even like the stage yep. role from the first game. Yep. Now they're basically going to have daily and hourly towers huh. where uh, they'll put just crazy modifiers on it to make it weird. They'll have like seasonal events. Uh, they, one of the designers, name here. Derek Kurtzig was talking about like a, a seasonal event where explosive pumpkins like rain down on you and they'll have things like callbacks to other characters that maybe aren't in the game. They'll use that as maybe an opportunity to let you play as DLC characters that aren't unlocked yet for you. Uh, they really want that to be the thing that people come back to over and over again. And another way they'll do that is to tie it into the faction system. So when you play, you pick one of five factions and everything you do unlocks like reputation or uh, experience for your faction. And then, what is it, once a month? Let me check here. Let me refer to my notes. Oh, every week, there's a, there's a, a winner of a faction war, and then they get a, like a whole bunch of digital goodies. Hmm. And essentially, this all plugs into like a crypt that will have a bunch of unlocks, so like character art, new characters, new skins, new sound effects, all that kind of thing. They really want to just like put a ton of shit in the game, so you'll always have something to do instead of just plugging through arcade mode again. Mortal Kombat and Injustice had so much more to do alone than I feel like anything else. Like, I am the kind of person, I, I really love fighting games. I don't go online and play them that much because I get my ass kicked, um, but I like playing them. So having like really good training options or like combo training and stuff like that is fun. But with Injustice having a whole like campaign story mode that let me try out every single character and like experience the campaign in different ways, is just like, it's it's really what, if you can make a solid fighting game that also has a really solid campaign, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So with games like Killer Instinct going into seasonal mode, Street Fighter releasing basically an EXC pack or a super pack or basically re-releasing itself every couple of years, do you think Mortal Kombat's doing enough with this iteration to stand out from the crowd? Uh, I think so. I think so. Uh, it's one of the things James would mention when it comes to, I think it was like Destiny? I can't remember what game you were like, I want it so every time I log in there's something new to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and it sounds like that's what Mortal Kombat's gonna be. You'll log in and it'll say, hey, there's this new like test your luck tower. By the way, test your luck is the thing where it'll like roll these random modifiers on the match so you, you'll both regenerate health or I got one that was like striker grenades so these grenades would just start flying in from off screen and hitting both characters. Mm -hmm. So it'll, it'll really mix up the game and make you kind of think on your feet in terms of how you play. Uh, I think it'll be the sort of thing where you'll you'll you know you'll launch up Mortal Kombat X and it'll say hey there's this new tower try it out mm -hmm. and then you play it and then when you finish a match it's just like you got coins you got experience you ranked up you get a new player background you get a new banner it'll just like it'll just rain all this shit on you and you'll be like I'm doing well yeah yeah. Pac-Man. <laughs> 
shall I knock you off your perch? We keep hat and shiny teeth. So overall, it sounds like you had a good amount of time with the game. What's the biggest takeaway that you got with your time in Chicago? For me, I was really excited by all the all the little tweaks to the fighting engine. Uh, just things like like backdash has invincibility frames now. So like if and you can do like late wake up. So say there's a player just like standing over you, you can do late wake up in, into invincible dash bash to backdash. Dak bash. Dak bash. <laughs> backdash to to get out of a really shitty setup that you shouldn't have to be in, uh, and then. Conversely, if you just knock someone down, you can enter that mind game with them. And that's something that Mortal Kombat never had. Mind game. I, I guess last but not least, is Johnny Cage in the game? Did you find out? You know, uh... So we've been looking at footage of this game for a while, and I've been looking over my notes. It is jogging my memory a little bit. Uh, Johnny Cage confirmed! <laughs> I'm still not sure if Johnny Cage is in the game, I'm sorry. Well, that's about all the time we have for today. Be sure to subscribe so you can see more videos where we eventually find out if Johnny Cage is in Mortal Kombat X. Fingers crossed! We're miss gonna continue the search. God, I missed that character. Thank you for watching. Gotta get back to the chopper.